Welcome to this week's episode of Star Watch, which is a weekly astrological transit report for Wednesday, February 15th. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Jane. Thank you all so much for being here. Thanks for tuning in this week too, because this is kind of an interesting week. There are a lot of little nuances to pay attention to, okay? Uh, this week we have the sun coming into Pisces. As just as Venus is leaving, on the 20th, we have a new moon in Pisces, which just so happens the same day that Venus comes into Aries. So the 20th is likely going to be, you know, kind of there's going to be a, an unsettled feeling and then we'll be able to move on. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Piscean archetype just a little bit, okay? Pisces, and I'm going to be speaking from a Northern Hemisphere perspective. I'm sorry, Southern Hemisphere, but um, if we're going to be looking at this from the Northern Hemisphere lens in terms of seasons, okay? So Pisces is a, a really important time of year. Virgo and Pisces both. Let me tell you why. Now, all the mutable seasons, Pisces, Gemini, Virgo, and Sagittarius, they're all, I mean, every season is important, uh, but... The, the mutables are responsible for changing gears, right? They move from one season into the next. Now, just a reminder, right? Capricorn season and Aquarius season, right? January and February are, are Saturn ruled seasons, okay? They're very cold, they're blustery, they're really uncomfortable, they are unfriendly, relentless seasons everything quote unquote dies. I mean, not really, but you know what I mean? All the life goes away. All the bugs go away, right? Like everything goes away. <laughs> and Pisces is the time when we start to see everything coming back. We start to see the trees blossom. We start hearing the birds. We start seeing the bugs where the grass starts to get greener, right? So there's this really important notion of hope that happens. This is one of the reasons why we say, oh, Pisces has the rose colored glasses because they do, right? That there's hope there. And let's also talk about the light. Okay. Because back here in the winter solstice, which is the beginning of Capricorn season, that's the time when the night is the longest and the day is the shortest. Now between Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces, the, the daylight is growing. Okay. And then when it hits Aries, that's when we have the equinox and then the light starts to get longer and longer. And that's why the sun is exalted in Aries because that's finally the time when the sunlight overpowers the night. Now, Pisces is that time right before the equinox. So it almost feels like the sun can see the final finish line. Because the sun is strong, right? It's in rulership here. Back in August in Leo season, it was in rulership, but it has not been in rulership for months. And then it had to go into its detriment through, <laughs> through uh, Capricorn and Aquarius and be in its adversary's energy, right? Saturn had to be in that adversarial place. And then finally it comes into Jupiter's domicile here with Pisces. And it's finally like, oh, okay, I can finally breathe. I can finally see myself revitalizing. My energy is coming back. My passion is coming back. I believe, I believe, I believe, right? That's the motto for Pisces. So this is the time right before the time when we actually really start pushing forward with a lot of things in our life, okay? If we're, if we're truly synchronizing our lives with the seasons, um, this is not only a time when life comes back, but it's like when we come back to life, okay? And we can breathe again and we can be outside again and we can uh, move our bodies and do all sorts of wonderful things when we hit this springtime season. Now, with this new moon, let me actually put the clock forward. It's not going to be exactly, but it's going to be on the 20th. So it's going to happen at one degree, 22 minutes of Pisces. Okay. So here's the sun and moon, the same day that Venus comes into Aries. Now, remember Venus had been in that conjunction with Neptune. Uh, and it was, it was a really important conjunction to happen because this is what 
Like, because Pisces is a really wandering energy. It doesn't have a lot of focus. It doesn't have a super clear vision with the, with stuff. But its heart knows what it wants. And this was a time when maybe quietly, maybe you weren't broadcasting it to the world. It probably was in some degree pretty secretive. But quietly you were dreaming. And I don't mean dreaming about what you want the world to do. All right. This is not about what's going on out there with other people. This is about what you want for yourself. And I have a feeling a lot of you were secretly dreaming about, I don't know, falling madly in love or (laughs) moving across the world or building that really big business. And you didn't want to share because you knew that if you shared your dreams with others, you would be, I don't know, maybe some of you would be afraid of getting laughed at. Maybe some of you would be afraid of getting called like you're out of your mind. It's never going to happen. How do you think you're going to do it? And even if you have really supportive people in your life that wouldn't mock you or anything, you still were probably keeping it quiet because what your heart was yearning for was so far away from where you currently are, it's almost as though you didn't want to jinx it. You didn't want to jinx it. You didn't want to, um, throw a wrench in the spokes because secretly subconsciously, you knew that Venus coming conjunct Neptune was a really magical time. And, and it is, it is a really magical time. And and there's a lot of energy shifts that truly happen. And if you actually allowed yourself to daydream or you allowed yourself to fall asleep at night, thinking of something like really beautiful, you were doing magic without even really realizing (laughs) you were casting spells without even realizing. Um, and those spells have an impact. And because of the likelihood that it was something really positive and beautiful and fairy tale like, as we often see with Pisces, um, because of that, it chances are your life is going to start to mold according to those things that you had been dreaming about. And guess what? That's not going to end either because as the sun comes through Pisces, um, that dreaming is going to continue. Now the problem with Pisces though, Okay, all these beautiful things about Pisces, but the problem with it is that when it comes to like the real world, it is not the most friendly place, right? We know that Pisces is associated with things like illness and and mental illness, um, both so physical and mental, also a lot of um, like hospitals and prisons and isolation and all sorts of these like worldly on the outskirts, way far away, separated, society doesn't want to deal with them kinds of things. It's not the most, it's environmentally, it's not the most friendly, but I think that's why so much belief and faith does come through this because those are the times when we need the faith and hope the most. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was some big world events. I mean, we are seeing a lot already, um, like with that, train derailment in Ohio, uh, which we've seen a lot more of those actually, which is really weird. Um, and even Pisces has a lot to do with like oil and gas specifically, but also a lot of chemicals too. So it honestly does not surprise me. Sorry. I felt like something was crawling on my back. I think it was just my hair. Um, It doesn't surprise me and it wouldn't surprise me if we continued to see something, you know, as Saturn comes into Pisces. But I talked about a lot of that in my 2023 through 2026 video. So if you want to catch that, you certainly can. Um, So externally, environmentally, this can be really tough. So it's not that your life is going to be perfect or going to be a dream. It's that life is just going to be life and life is going to do what life does. And this is like you being hopeful, being faithful, being trusting and staying on a high with a high perspective. I'm not going to say like high vibrational per se, but I am going to say with a high perspective, if you can look at things from that angle, you'll be much, much, much better off. Okay. So hope and faith are really driving a lot right now. And to be honest, with this particular new moon, 
Like if you want, this is the moon, the Pisces new moon is what I always say, like make a wish. It's like the make a wish type of moon. You know, you, you look up in the sky and you wish upon a shooting star type of thing. And then you let it go and you release and then you wait until it becomes true. Because Pisces does have that kind of subtle magic to it. We know that Pisces represents a lack of boundary. It re represents a boundlessness, if you will, where there is no distinction between physical world. And I say this about Sagittarius as well, both Jupiterian. There is no border between the physical realm and the mystical realm. There is none. Okay. So, uh, things tend to manifest a little bit easier under the influence of the Piscean archetype. Um, and then we have Venus now, she, you know, she just came off of this like really magical, hopeful transit with Neptune coming into Aries. Now she officially comes in and we have this Jupiter Chiron conjunction building. Now I've said a lot about this, so I'm not going to talk too much about it this week, but just know that Venus is coming in to really stabilize this particular conjunction. Now Jupiter conjunct Chiron is definitely magnifying the wounds. And this can happen for many of you. I think it's happening through career, romantic relationships and your home and family life and probably specifically with parents. Okay. Probably, I don't know that this is necessarily going to be financial for anyone, unless you have Aries in the second or eighth house, maybe even 11th house. Um, but generally speaking, I think this is coming through other people. So if you're in a relationship and you're fighting or you're going through an unstable period of time, there's Jupiter expanding that pain and that wound, right? Or if you are at work and someone gets promoted over you, well, there's that magnification of that not feeling valuable enough, right? All that kind of thing. So Venus comes in and she kind of cools this particular conjunction down a little bit. Now, again, we'll, we'll talk more about this next week. This is not technically happening this week. I just want to prepare you a little bit. Um, she's going to even everything out. So the impact of this, it's not, uh, it's not so bad because there could be a tendency for certain people to like implode on themselves or, you know, let the part of themselves that has kind of that self sabotage type of quality, um, kind of take over to fight against progress or to fight against growth or to fight against the belief in love or whatever the case is. But Venus is going to come and just sort of shush all of that and be like, look, it's really okay. You're fine. This particular external circumstance, does not indicate your inherent value. And it has nothing to do with what you should think about yourself. So she's going to come in and I think stand up for, for you a little bit with this particular energy. But for now you may be feeling that, that kind of exposure, but there is, does seem to be a willingness, um, to really find a way we still have Mars in Gemini. Now he's officially at 16 degrees this week, which means he's only got, you know, he's about halfway through Gemini. So we know he's going to enter cancer at the end of March. So about a month, a little over a month from now. Um, so he's officially on his last leg through Gemini as well. He is in a trine with Mercury. So there's a lot of like trying to find a path. Now I know I just said, well, Pisces is the wandering spirit, but I think this could actually be good. It's kind of like when you move to a new city or you travel to a new city and you plop yourself in the very center and you decide to just explore. And when you explore, you find really cool things, cool restaurants, cool shops, cool places to look at the view, you know, whatever the case is. And then you can earmark those places that you enjoyed and you liked, and you can come back to them and make them a part of your regular repertoire. Right. And I think that's kind of what's going on here is the universe is plopping you somewhere where you don't know what the heck is going on, but it's for the sake of you having a really cool place to familiarize yourself with. 
Uh, now we know that familiarization is a really important aspect of manifestation, right? If you, now some people can manifest big things all at once, right? Like you win a lottery, but generally probably about 98% of the time, our manifestations are incremental. We incrementally manifest things. We make a change and then we adjust. We familiarize and then we make another change and then we familiarize again and then again and again and again. And pretty soon we're operating all the way up here and we can handle more, we can do more. And that's when the manifestations can start to get bigger and bigger and bigger because you're doing bigger things because you're now familiarized with that bigger energy. So while you may feel really disoriented with this Piscean energy, if you don't lose your hope, which I don't think you do, and I don't think you will, Mars and, and Mercury in these air signs are absolutely finding some kind of a path, finding an out, finding a new location or finding a new, um, now I say location, maybe more like metaphorically, you're finding new venues, you're finding new aspects of life that please you right? That please you and that, that make you, um, feel connected with your life in a better way, more fulfilled with your life in a better way. Let's not forget that now we all, we officially have Pluto at the 29th degree of Capricorn as well. Um, we are, we are going to start 29th degree as We know the anoretic degree of any sign is potent and powerful. We've already seen the power of Pluto in Capricorn. We're seeing, you know, I think uh, we know, we know that as Pluto comes into Aquarius, it's going to retrograde back and forth two different times, which means this 29th degree is going to get hit up like four different times. Um, so this is like the beginning of that 29th degree power and Pluto goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So a lot of the things we're seeing I mean, we're having a lot of weird stuff, right? They're talking about the Epstein list coming out. They're taught, well, we got the thing happening in Ohio and a lot of other chemical stuff going on around the world. We have, um, another shooting, unfortunately, right? There's all this like big dramatic stuff happening right now. Uh, that's just kind of the beginning, I think. I think it is just the beginning. And I wouldn't be surprised if we, over the next couple of years, we did start to see a lot more exposure of a lot of the cor corruption within government, not only the U.S. government, but around the world. I mean, we know it's there. We're not dummies, but I think it's time for a lot of that to be exposed, right? Capricorn is a really restricted sign. Aquarius is not. So it's almost as though Pluto is going to be going into the restricted places and bringing it out into the open going back into Capricorn, going back into the restricted places, comes back into Aquarius and exposes more and more. So we're probably going to see more and more exposure over the years, but a lot of the, th the stuff is happening right now <laughs> as of, as of this week with Pluto hitting this 29th degree. Okay. Um, Yeah. I mean, it's kind of an interesting week. It really is. It's there, there's just a lot of, um, moving pieces, but our hope is, is really what's, what's driving us. Okay. So make sure to stay hopeful and be sure to wish upon a shooting star or wish upon the new moon. And you can think of the manifestations under Pisces as being softer. This is not about really having a lot of control. I don't know that like, you know, a ceremony where you try to will your way or will something into existence. I don't know. That's, that's not really how Pisces works. Okay. This is not about your will. This is about your faith. Two totally different things. Okay. So this is a much softer manifestation approach. It's a, it's a gentle request. It's a dream, a daydream. It's, it's getting lost in the clouds type of manifestation. Okay. So, uh, keep that in mind if you do want to do any kind of a ceremony. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave you guys there. We'll keep it short and sweet this week. Thank you all so much. I just know I love you. Take care. Bye-bye.